Hey, what's up everybody? It's Richie here, and today we have a big, big problem. As you've probably guessed from the title of this video, my computer is broken. Now you may wonder, how are you still recording then? Well, as of now, it's only mostly broken, but at a broken enough level that it's very hard to do anything. Let me explain. So a month or two ago in a Richie's world, I said, guys, I think my computer is breaking. The CPU's going, the GPU's going, and honestly, I'm using a computer that was never intended for gaming or video editing, and I don't think it can last much longer. And honestly, I was right. This computer was really never set out for this, and while it is a good, sturdy computer, it just can't keep up. I've been getting issues more and more frequently, and now I'm running into some serious problems. You probably noticed there wasn't a tutorial Monday, and well, we had a really good reason for that. I recorded the video, I turned on Adobe Premiere, I edited it around halfway, and Adobe Premiere crashed. So, I lost all my work, I'm like, okay, this is bad, I'm just gonna try again. I restart my computer, turn Adobe Premiere back on, I edit the whole video, and it crashes again. At this point, I'm feeling pretty discouraged, because it takes just about an hour and a half to edit the video each time, and I've done it twice, but whatever. I go to bed, I wake up the next day, and today, I'm gonna edit it, I'm gonna get it done, everything is gonna go perfect. So I log on to Adobe Premiere as soon as I wake up in the morning, I edit the entire thing, saving just about every five minutes, and finally, it's done. I hit render, and there's a render error. I hit render again, and there's another render error. I go for the third render, and it crashes. It just doesn't work. So I call up my uncle, who's pretty much a tech expert. I mean, this guy's worked designing computer prototypes at IBM. I think he can fix a simple crash, right? And I talk to him, I tell him about my computer, and he says, well, considering the computer you have, I'm surprised you've been able to do this at all. And that's what I expected him to say, but I was sort of hoping he'd say something else, that there would be a miracle fix but there isn't. Essentially, my computer is breaking because of what I've done to it over the last eight months. And it was a good run, but it just can't keep up anymore. And to be clear, this isn't the first time this has happened. I've had several saves corrupt, but never three in a row, and I've never had a render error before. So as of now, my computer is in a really questionable state. I can still sorta record with it, and hopefully I'll be able to edit it with something so that I can get it out and show this video to you guys but it's basically dead. Now this is actually good news. I know that confuses some of you. Actually, it confuses most of you, including me. But it is good news, because this means that I am going to be able to get a new computer. I've been saving up for a while, and apparently if you stay up till four in the morning trying to edit a video, cussing and swearing at your computer, your parents start to think that there might be an issue with it. So my parents have said they'd chip in some, and I'm gonna get a new computer, it's going to be a lot more powerful than anything I've ever had before, and that's going to mean a lot more YouTube videos. And once I get a newer computer, that means that we're going to be able to try some newer games, some fun stuff. And I know you're thinking, I don't want you to stop playing Minecraft, I don't want you to stop playing Minecraft. Well, don't worry, because I will never, ever give up on Minecraft. I may have some different videos, some varied content, but we will always have the Let's Play. The only change I can even think of making is having one tutorial a week instead of two. But even that, I'm not sure I want to do. I like the one non-Minecraft game a week schedule, and even though we haven't had a few of those for the last few weeks, I'm gonna get back into it, and I think it's gonna be pretty good. In the near future, though, don't be surprised if I miss a few videos, because my computer isn't gonna come for a few weeks, and until then, I'm basically trying to make a broken machine work. And when I do get a new computer, expect to set up video. I know a few of you have been asking one for a while, and I'm gonna go through everything I use to record on my new computer and my old one, as well as their specs. But anyway, guys, that seems like enough chit-chat for now, so I am gonna get right into the video, and we're gonna start building something. Now our first order of business today is collecting all of these skeleton horses. If you remember in the last episode, we ended up summoning in 16 of these things through lightning, and well, they're not going anywhere, so I'm gonna set up some sort of an enclosure and try to trap all of them. All right, so we've successfully collected 11 horses. There are still quite a few missing, and now before we do anything else, 
we're going to test them. Now, since there are 11, that's quite a lot, and not all of them are going to be able to stay. So over here, I've devised a few tests to see which ones are the best. This right here is a very basic speed test, and it works in a very simple way. As you can see right here, we have a monostable circuit going into a piston and into a hopper. Or, to put that in better words, pushing a redstone block over the hopper. Now, when the redstone block's on the hopper, it locks it, and no items can flow out. So what we're going to do is put some items in there, and as soon as we cross this pressure plate right here with our horse, it gets retracted, and then the items can flow out. But when we finally come to the other side, the block gets pushed back, and it locks the hopper. So now we have a certain amount of items, and that is our speed score, essentially, for our horse. The less items, the faster it is, and by using this, we can see which horses are the fastest. And now that we've got it working, let's try it out. So I have this horse, I aim perfectly straight, hold control, and sprint. And let's see our speed for this one. That's not too bad, our speed is 9 items. And of course, if we are getting horses with the same speed scores, then we're gonna have to try something else. All right, second horse, second try, let's sprint right on ahead. We did veer off the path a little bit, but it shouldn't matter that much. And our score here is nine items. I think what we're gonna have to do is make this path longer and that will make everything equal out a lot more. All right, guys, the course has been revamped again and we're ready to go. So let's sprint out of the gate and see if we get anything different from what we got before. We're obviously gonna get more than nine, but what we get and how much of a difference it is, I don't know. And it's gonna impact how accurate our course is. So let's open up this box. 16, that is not too bad. Let's race the other horse and see what he gets. All right, here we go. We're not doing too bad, and this one is gonna get over a 16, hopefully. And if he does, or at least gets any sort of a different number, that will mean our test is accurate. So he gets... Oh, you're kidding me. You know what, I'm just gonna roll with it. Unless they're the two fastest horses, I'm just gonna call it tied and ignore it. And as this horse has shown, all horses are definitely not created equal, as this one scored a 32. And now that I've got the hang of this, I'm gonna test all the horses and get back to you. All right, so the results of the tests are in, a lot of time has passed, and a lot of things have happened. First of all, in our virtual Minecraft world, I've completed the testing, the slowest horse clocking in at a speed of 23, and the fastest horse clocking in at a speed of 13. I know you saw 32 before, well, that was a mistake. I had just forgotten to reset the counter once, so we got two 16s. Talking about 16s, we have five of them, so we're gonna decide which horses are worthy by their health and their jump height. Eventually, at some point, maybe in this episode, we're gonna set up a horse breeding program. Now, skeleton horses can't breed and are above average, but regular horses can. And while a regular everyday horse will be below a skeleton horse, if you keep breeding horses together for qualities such as speed, health, and jump height, you're gonna get a far better horse than any skeleton horse that will spawn. In other non-Minecraft related news, I have picked out the PC I want. It's on a great deal, it's $200 off, and this thing is a beast. It has a nice CPU in it, an NVIDIA GTX card, and it's awesome. Now, it is a laptop because my connection's so bad, I just can't have a desktop right now. But it is pretty powerful, and this, of course, means that we're going to be able to play some other games. But like I said before, Minecraft is never going to stop. So without further ado, I think it's time to start the jump contest. We're going to start with two blocks, which anyone should easily be able to make, and then keep moving up from there. And once a horse can't make the jump, as this one actually can't, we will put him back and try our next door. So let's see if this one can make 2.2, and it can. And while this one can jump a good amount, it can't quite make three blocks. So we're going to put it back and see what the other ones can do. Okay, I've chosen the horses I want to keep, and I lied earlier. I said no horses could jump three blocks, but in fact, there are two. And coincidentally, they both have the same amount of health and the same amount of speed, 16. Besides the two 16s with the highest jump height, we have a 14 with a fairly low amount of health that's fairly fast, and of course our 13, our prize skeleton horse, who I think is our fastest. I mean, seriously, this guy flies, but I think that's just enough horsing around for this episode, and what I'm gonna do now 
is something quite a bit more difficult. What I'm going to try to do is link up another portal to that AFK platform up in the sky, and then add a little bit of a storage system to the bottom of our mob spawner. And when we do that, it will be completely functional and operational. So I've set up the nether portals at the AFK platform, and everything appears to be pretty good. So what we're going to do is record our coordinates just by taking a screenshot, and then we're going to have to make a corresponding portal in the nether by dividing those coordinates by 8. So the portal's been built, it's as high as I can make it without going onto the roof of the nether, and it's stretched just a little bit away from the other portals, so hopefully it'll work. But you can never be sure, especially when portals are close. And we did it! We have actually done it. I'm so happy about that, because I tried it before, when I was just thinking about making an elytra launcher, and it just didn't work. I couldn't get the portals to link up. But it appears, as of now, that we've succeeded. So what we're going to do now is fly all the way down. It's really quite a long way. And then we're going to work on some sort of a storage system down here. You saw it here first, guys. Revolutionary state-of-the-art storage systems. Uh, I am sorry. I really am. But unfortunately, I'm out of time. I'm really stressed about the laptop thing. And honestly, I lost a ton of time because of the laptop thing. I only had one day to record this today, and usually I record this over the course of a whole week. So I'm sorry we didn't get all that much done, and I'm sorry if this episode never comes out, because if my editing software breaks again, I don't know what to do. So for now, I'm just gonna head up to the platform and hope everything works out alright. And if it did, then you'll be seeing this video. If it didn't, then I'll release something explaining what's going on. And again, I am sorry that this video is short and that we didn't get a lot done, but given the circumstances, I'm surprised we had a video at all. And if you did like this video and want to support my channel, please feel free to hit that like and or subscribe button. This has been Richie, and I will see you next time. Unless, of course, my computer breaks. In which case, I'll see you when I get a new one.